Greetings YouTube and welcome to the Blue Corner and once again we're going to be taking a look over at the OCG regarding Vanguard and seeing just what's changed since the last time we took a look over at their format post AL4 release and has anything changed? Well, we actually have a single tournament that we can look at in addition to your usual teams and even some premium stuff too. So yeah, I'd say we got a good amount to talk about so let's dive into this. So first thing to note is I decided to put everything in the middle of the page as opposed to on the left hand side. Just wanted to see if it looked nicer or worse. Let me know down below. And um, yeah, the first up we've got the, oh lord, I don't know if I can even try to pronounce this, the Iwamiza VGS standard. Yeah, 41 people with our first place being Murakumo, one of only two people playing the deck I should point out. Second and third is Oracle Think Tank, and third is Shadow Paladin. And apparently this guy, this Murakumo player, also beat a Shadow Paladin deck in top eight in order to get the top four, in which he also fought Shadow Paladin, and then beat Oracle Think Tank in the final. So this guy was able to beat two straight Shadow decks, which on paper should eat this deck alive, but apparently no. Shadow's... Uh, I mean, okay, granted, if you're able to Zombaku a Shadow Paladin deck on the Dark Dictator turn, they probably feel sad, and this guy's playing four Zombaku, four Musashi, and three Mandala Lord, in addition to the two Arresters and Fushimi, plus, like, your grade ones, and yeah, uh, not really much I can say about this, and then the Oracle Think Tank deck list is... Is this... Oh, this is, this is literally two cards off of what I'm playing right now. Neat. Uh, he's playing four chicken, whereas I'm playing two chicken and two of the orange chick. This third place Oracle Think Tank. Oh, he's playing three torts. I don't have three torts. That's that makes me sad. And then our fourth place Shadow Paladin deck list is more of the same here. So that's our single tournament. Oracle Think Tank was the second most played deck. Shadows was the most played. Oracle Think Tank though took the most spots in top cut, second and third place respectively. Uh, and Morikumo, once again, doing decently well. Now, I don't know if this is indicative of the deck just being good, or if the guy was able to high roll for a good amount. I want to wait a bit longer before giving final judgment. But it looks like, though, if you were able to pick up Morikumo for the $55 that Ideal 808 was selling it at, or for, like, under 60 you got a steal, truth be told. And Murakumo are getting a second wave of support close to, I mean, not the set... Uh, two sets afterwards, so uh, it seems like it wouldn't be a bad investment. Then we're back to the usual stuff of team format, in which Oracle Think Tank is played in almost everything. So the 193 VGS standard format teams, first place Murakumo, which went 6-1, and one. Oracle Think Tank, which is 5-2, and two, and Shadow Paladin, which went 5-2, and two. second place was Mega Colony, which also went 6-1, and one. and then the rest of the records are not known for Kagero, Pale Moon, third place Oracle Think Tank, Kagero GI, and then fourth place Shadow Paladin, Kagero, and Oracle Think Tank. So this Murakumo list also did pretty well, and it played four Mandala Lord and one Musaji. I don't know, I feel like that other list is just better, but in any case, Murakumo doing well, and even in teams. Oh lord, three torts. Uh, I might have to have to bite the bullet and get the third copy. And that's that. Let's take a look at the second place team with the 6-1 Mega Colony deck. Interesting, he's playing some other grade 3 that I have no idea what it does, I just noticed that it's giftless. But for those people out there who play Mega Colony, there's a list you can work off of. And then you've got this Kagro deck, and Pale Moon. Oh, I'm really hoping that the next batch of Pale Moon support speeds up their soul charge, because I feel like that and, I don't know, making their lanes bigger would be just enough to get them there. Then we got Oracle Think Tank, Kagro, and Dimension Police, and D Dark Irregulars, who are also very slow going off, so give them a bit more soul charging and maybe the deck will do something more than appear in teams. First place, I mean, fourth place, Shadow Paladin, Kagro, Oracle Think Tank. Uh, yatta, yatta, and uh, yeah, so. Oh lord, this guy's playing four torts! Uh, those things are like 13 US right now, I think. Then we have the D Cups tournament standard format, 48 teams. First place Grand Blue 6-2, second place Oracle Tank Tank 6-2, third and 
not second. I mean, the first place team was Grand Blue, OGT, and Shadows. All of them had winning records. Second place team was Cogger, Oracle Think Tank, and Shadows went 4-4. Four four. Third place was Royal Paladin, which went 5-3. Spike went 5-3. Oracle Think Tank went 7-1. and one. And then lastly, we had Shadows, Oracle Think Tank, and Spike. So, OGT, OTT, OTT, OTT. Shadows, Shadows, Shadows. And then, like, the other recurring deck is... Yeah, so it's like, it's like Shadow Paladin and Oracle Think Tank are your, like, two most played decks of the format, followed by Kagero. Ten Murakumo with this one, but none in the teams. Okay. Uh, only four Grand Blue, but one got in there. One Tachikaze. Oh, man. Tachi's dropped off hard, but I figured as much once Shadow Paladin came in. All right, so let's take a look at these decks. So, this is. Oh, wow. This is literally the deck list I'm playing card for card. Yeah, like I actually have a Grand Blue deck profile shot, and it's this list. So, um, yeah, spoiler alert for that. Then we have our Oracle Think Tank deck. So, this one's not playing Tort at all. Instead, it's playing the On Attack Draw One Scribe One, but he's also playing the Gemini. And then you've got Shadows here. Move a bit down. Uh, this Shadows went 4-4. Four four. I'm going to assume he just played a lot of Oracle Think Tank, especially since the one Oracle Think Tank is in slot 3 of the other team, and it went 7-1. He probably faced a good chunk of Shadow Paladins. So here's a 5-3 Royals list, 5-3 Spikes, and 7-1 Oracle Think Tank. I approve of the uh, Professor Kukui marker. Let's just see if I can get a good look at his two. Oh, he's only he's playing two torts and the uh, box topper. Uh, da, da, da. Shadows, Oracle, Thinking Spikes. No records on these guys known. Boop. And boop. So Spikes still getting there sometimes. And then just look, a thing I want to point out. Last week, I took a look at some premium decks and I thought they were on a team. They're not. What's going on is there's these series of tournaments called the Akiba Qualifiers, and they're all just separate tournaments played multiple times, I think, throughout the day or throughout the weekend. So even though it says GB Akiba Qualifier Premium, it's going to be separate tournaments with separate results. So with that being said, first one was a 42-player tournament in which No Life King Assassin won. And then the second tournament was won by Luard. The third tournament was won by No Life King Assassin, and the fourth tournament was won by No Life King Assassin. Spoiler alert, DI and Premium are really good, and I think they have a good Nasiel Gize matchup? I believe that's what it is? People are saying that this deck should also eat OTT Gize alive too, but that remains to be seen, and that's where we're at right now. So, what can we take away from this? Oracle Think Tank is obviously not budging. Shadow Paladin are proving to be a pretty competent second deck of the format. Third, if you think Kagro is a bit better because of its uh, higher OTT matchup. Murakumo are potentially really good, but at this point, it's hard to say if they're just high rolling the hell out of people or if like the deck's just legitimately good. Uh, hopefully, like after next weekend, we'll have a better idea of what's going on. And then on the premium side of things, Dark Regulars are dumb. And that's pretty much all we can really take away from this. It's unfortunate that Pale Moon is only really appearing in teams at the moment. Same for DI, but uh, Standard's just not a kind format for either of those decks. And that's all I really got to say about this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is Blue Starting 9, checking out.